digital romance TV. Hey folks, how are you? It's uh, Michael Fiore along with Nora Blake and my microphone that is pulling me down towards the ground. And uh, today we're talking about cheating. We're talking about how to tell if a cheater has changed. Well, are they wearing the same outfit as last time? Then you know. No, um, so cheating is a big topic and it's one that gets people really angry and really vicious and people think cheaters go to hell and all that other kind of stuff. Though it's funny because something like 45% of people end up cheating uh, in their relationships at some time. Anyway, there is that adage out there that says, once a cheater, always a cheater. And that is unequivocally bullshit. Yeah. Um, certainly, if somebody has a history of constantly cheating, if there's somebody, I mean, we get emails from people like the, to talk about this all the time, both men and women, by the way. It's like men do not have a um, you know, monopoly on cheating. Um, if it's somebody who just is not capable of being in a uh, monogamous relationship, then no, they're not going to change. There's not going to be a moment where they suddenly wake up one day and say, I am really happy with just this one person. But there's a whole other category of people who cheat and who only cheat once or mm. twice mm -hmm. over the course of decades, as yep. it were. And that's the, the, it's contextual cheating where it's like, well, the relationship wasn't working so well at that time, or they're cheating because they're not feeling emotionally satisfied in the relationship or desired or appreciated or anything like that, and they end up cheating, and oftentimes they tell their spouse about it, there's a lot of therapy, there's a lot of other kinds of things, and then a relationship can kind of move on. But just because somebody has, I would say like if somebody like gets drunk at a conference or a party, ends up in bed with somebody, regrets it, then you're probably okay about these yep. kind of things. That said, if you want to be in a successful relationship with somebody, you have to be able to trust them, that they're not going to break their word, whatever that word may say. And you know, the level of exclusivity that you have is between you and your partner, really. There's plenty of people who you don't even know how many people have somewhat open relationships or whatever else is out there. It's I would more say if they think. came forward to you yep. with the information they talked about how it happened, they gave you all of the details, they shared with, you know, in terms of like, this is what happened, yep. this is, here's a, why, I, here's think it why happened. I think it yeah. happened, they've done some actual, you know, self-reflection and tried to think about all of these things and come to some conclusions and that's a person that is not looking to do this, that's a person who is not trying to get away with anything, that's a person who's not trying to be going out, I'm yeah. sorry. They're not trying to just like, you know, go out and sleep with as many people as they, yeah. as they want. Um, and those are people that you learn to trust over time, yep. essentially. The only way you uh, know if a cheater has changed is consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a family member who, um, you know, ostracized herself from my entire family for several years. She recently came back into our lives. She's saying, well, I've changed, I've changed, everything's gonna be great. I'm like, well, okay, in a year or two, I'll trust that you've really changed, that you really have. It takes and, a little time. Yeah. I mean, in a marriage, that's hard to, but, accepting, I mean, you can't also put somebody in a penalty box yeah. for two years while you figure out whether you can trust them again or not. So yeah, that, and you, that and has to be- you can't spend all your time like constantly monitoring right. everything they do and everything like that. It can't change the basic nature yeah. of your relationship or uh, accept that it has to, to a certain degree in terms of you'll never be the, you know, the, before the cheating and after the cheating, but you also can't let it change the trust levels. And, and you also need to be able to sit so. there and, and when you're considering staying in a relationship with somebody who has cheated, um, are you, is it worth the potential pain of that happening again? Because it could. And by the way, even people who haven't cheated can cheat. There's plenty of people who have never cheated their entire life, and then when they're in their 50s, they do at that point because yep. they're finally, they finally meet somebody who just you know, tweaks them in that particular way or whatever else. But when you're deciding to stay committed to somebody who has broken your trust in that way, you have to kind of think to yourself, okay, well, I could get hurt again. I mean, being in love in general is about exposing yourself to potential pain. Yep. It just is, because you're giving somebody the power to hurt you at that point. So I guess the question is really, you know, serial cheaters, people who cheat all the time, that's when you could ask, has that person changed? Because you want them to go from cheating all the time to being someone who doesn't cheat. And most likely they're not going to. If it's a pattern they've had their entire life, they're not going to. But I think you're asking the wrong question about people who've only cheated once, twice, whatever it's going to be. They don't need to change because you know what they, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, they were a person who didn't cheat. And then there was that 0.1% of the time where they did. Right. So you don't want them to change. You want them to go back to being who they are most of the time. Right. And what you need to do then is figure out what was the situation that led to that anomalous cheating at that point, right? Yep. 
So that's, I think you just need to change the question quite a bit and think of it that way instead of thinking about like, okay, well, they're obviously a cheater. And so many people that look at it say, well, he cheated or she cheated, so she's an awful person. She was lying about everything the entire time. No, she wasn't. There was just, for whatever reason, there was a confluence of events at that time in her life or his life that led to, you know, maybe, maybe they were seduced, maybe whatever else was going on, maybe there was alcohol or drugs, whatever else, that led to having sex with somebody else. And that doesn't mean they're a bad person, it doesn't mean they're gonna do it again, it just means that happened. And really what you wanna do is not change the person, but set it up so that that situation doesn't happen again. Absolutely. Fix the problems that led to that as opposed to actually fixing the person. Okay, done. Well, she good agreed. job. It's good. So there you go. If uh, you agree or disagree, I mean, so for all of you that want to say, cheaters are horrible, they're all going to, just go ahead. Just go do it get, down there. Get it out. Get it out. Just write it. Put a lot of comments down here. Downvote the video as much as you can. It's cool. I understand. You're wrong, but it's okay. It's cool. And then go to digitalromance.tv and watch more videos. Bye. If you've got a cell phone in your pocket or purse right now, then you've got everything you need to create incredible romance and passion with the man or woman in your life at the push of a button. Go to digitalromance.tv forward slash TRB to see Michael Fiore make an entire audience of women on The Rachel Ray Show swoon and learn how to use tiny little text messages to have the relationship of your dreams.